Thank you, everyone. So today we are going to uh, see, you know, uh, understand what is DOTS and some overview about DOTS. And uh, if you're new to DOTS, then uh, this is the right session for you. So yeah, don't panic. So let's understand first of all, uh, before, you know, DOTS. So actually, currently, you know, um, Unity is based on object-oriented programming. You know, it's based on the um, game objects. So for example, if you have game objects, um, uh, you know, game objects is attached to different kind of uh, components, maybe like, well, as you can see, we have transform, renderer, collider, particle effects, material, rigid body, lights, uh, audio sound, and so many uh, components that is attached to the game object, actually. So, so this is actually how we are um, uh, building games, actually, in Unity, uh, creating a game object, then adding some components on it. Remember, all these components have the properties, and these properties are the data. So this is how actually it's uh, working, and um, these components data are actually um, are manipulated by the mono behavior. Mono behavior is where um, uh, the the behavior is actually introduced. Um, um, it is actually um, uh, communicating with the data that is there on the properties, actually on the on the component data. So this is actually how it's working currently. So I hope you guys know what uh, it's working on. But let's now understand what is actually happening, because the way we are we are working with the uh, object-oriented programming, you know, we are designing things based on the real-world scenario, like. We don't actually know what's happening on the CPU side. We don't actually know what's happening on our memory, but we just design our application based on the real world uh, scenarios. So introducing mono behaviors where we introduce behaviors to our games and uh, it's manipulating our data that is from the component actually. So we actually don't know what's happening. So let's go and see what's happening uh, on, our, on our memory. So once you click on the runtime, this is how things are happening on your memory. So all those components you're seeing on the memory behavior are scattered across the memory. So there are a lot of CPU cache. So um, this introduces, this, this gives hard time for the CPU to actually uh, get the data from the memory and process it. So this is a single game object, actually, if you can see, maybe if we want to have multiple game object like this, this is how actually your data looks like. But, you know, when you're building games, actually, you know, you, uh, things are easier, okay, on your side, but you actually don't know what's happening on your CPU. You don't know actually what's happening on your memory, but this is the real scenario, not happening on the memory. So the more you introduce game objects on your memory, the more uh, this data are scattered uh, on, on the memory. So it gives hard time you know, the, for the game objects to find its, you know, its components. So it, th this means that it takes a lot of time for the game object actually to um, find the components of their data actually. So now this is really, really a huge problem. Now, how can we actually address this problem? This is how DOTS works. It arranges all the components and the data like this on the memory. Okay, just forget about the mono behavior there, but you know, there's no, there's nothing, there's nothing like mono behavior on the DOTS, but I'm just trying to give you an overview on how DOTS arrange the data if you compare it, uh, if you compare it with this one. So this one is more scattered with a lot of CPU cache there. But this one is more organized. It gives the CPU less time to allocate the data by, uh, or, or allocate it on the memory, actually. So if you take a look, this is actually not only the advantage of, um, um, of, of dots, having you know, uh, sorting and organizing the data on the memory. The, well, one, um, on top of that, actually, um, dots is, uh, has gone to an extra mile of, for example, if you have a transform property like this, there are lots of properties that we have on transform, actually, for example, as you can see here. So I'll try to explain it in a level where you can understand. 
So dot picks only the necessary properties and it leaves the rest of the property. That's another great advantage of dots. But in terms of object-oriented programming, it will pick everything, every property that you're seeing on my screen. So for example, if I go back again, um, for example, if this is an object-oriented programming, imagine transform, rigid body, collider, material, renderer, and all those components that you've touched the game object. Imagine some of uh, all of the properties will actually be used and some of them, not even some of them, most of them will actually uh, be not necessary. So it will be just there. It doesn't work. It will just be there. So this is really a big deal when we only pick some kind of properties that we only want and we, uh, we actually remove the rest of the property. So this is a really big deal in terms of the memory data. So this is what actually I mean. If you have to pick all the uh, tra uh, transform property, then we might end up, for example, this is just an estimate, might end up of, of having you know, a consumption of 150 megabytes of the memory. But if we only pick uh, the required property, then we might end up having a 25 megabytes of the memory. So this is really, really a great, uh, a big deal on how DOTS is helping us, helping us to optimize our games. So now, what is how, how now now if we go now deeper okay not not even deeper the uh, the, uh, the the components of dots you know we have actually you all know we have entity component system the c sharp job system and the bust compiler system but before i go uh, to explain what is entity what, what is actually the entity component system the c sharp job system and bust compiler system i just want to show you why we call an entity component system so let me just go back again. This is the game object, a game object with its components. Now, all these components that you're having, for example, position, rotation, and speed, we are just keeping them as a component data, just are just component data with its entity. And the system now is our behavior, actually. So, you know, um, in a game object, you usually have a mono behavior that uh, uh, add the behavior to all of our uh, to, uh, to all of our code, but this one we have the system. So we'll just discuss uh, what is the system in details, what's the component data in details, and what's an entity in detail. So having ha having these two entities, as you can see on the screen, position, rotation, and speed, position, rotation, and speed, entity A and B. You can see you can uh, you can see that we have two entities with the same um, uh, with the same actually uh, component data type. So entities of the same component data type are stored to a particular um, thing that we call an archetype, for example. So this is what we call an archetype. Archetype is generally a collection of the entity with the same component data. So storing every entity uh, of the same component data is actually called an archetype. So we might have different sets of archetypes uh, for example, I can show you this one. Um, um, th this is actually, okay, uh, as, as you can see, we have three players here. Um, player, maybe I can name player A, B, and C, but uh, this player, you can see uh, the first and the second one, we, might, we can assume that the first and the second player have uh, the same component data, position, and the, and the rendering. And the third um, player, we can have an extra component data like rotation. So there are two similarities here for, uh, between the player A uh, and uh, the first player and the second player. They, have, they share the same component data and we put them as the same archetype. And the other player, it, it has an extra component data that is quite different from, uh, from the archetype A. So that's, uh, make it, uh, uh, that's why you're making it to be um, and act type B being different with act type A. So, so this is how actually an archetype is stored on the uh, computer memory, um, having the positions and the render on the memory. So we, can, we might have a quite number of archetypes stored on the, um, on, the, uh, on, on, the, um, on the memory actually, for example, as you can see here. So, so the, the more we have, um, 
the archetypes, you know, the, the collection of these archetypes, we usually call it a chunk. So uh, this is the chunk of data of, of different archetypes that is stored on the computer memory. So the more we have uh, actually the entities, the more the chunk we have uh, organized uh, on our computer memory. And this is really, really great. It helps the CPU to quickly um, find the data from the, um, find the data actually from the memory uh, and, and process it. So that's the basic thing, the, the simple English I can use, you know, I just to confuse you on uh, what is and what's that. So what is DOT actually? So it's a new approach of writing your code in data-oriented formats. So it's a combination of new technologies that work together to deliver the data-oriented approach. So what's really a data-oriented approach? So uh, suppose we have two scenarios, an object-oriented programming that we should use and a data-oriented uh, data design. So an object-oriented programming, we might, you know, we usually have collections of uh, objects and this object might, ha might have data, usually have data, actually not, uh, they have data and functions. So if a function wants to access data from different objects, you know, we usually have to write our own, um, our, we usually ha have to write our own functions or we can just quickly, you know, uh, inherit it from the parent class. That's actually how we are writing, you know, an object-oriented program. That's a major, 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 major disadvantage of an object-oriented programming. So they, you can just access data from different objects uh, unless you write your own um, function or, uh, or you derive those functions from, from the parent class. But in the data-oriented design, everything is considered as a data. So data can be shared uh, across any other data as you can see. So there's no restriction of accessing data from different sections. So all data are accessible without the hierarchical model. But this one, object-oriented programming, there must be a hierarchical model for you, you know, to, uh, to follow the paradigm that, are, that is there actually being produced. So the main component of dots, uh, there are, Entity com we have the entity component system, the jobs, and the BAST. That's what we call, you know, the collection of these new technologies that is introduced to Unity uh, makes what we call DOT component, data oriented technology stack. And actually, we have native containers, but um, native container is a data structure of an entity component system that helps us to, you know, um, control the memory for the ECS. So it's a kind of uh, a data structure. So what's really an entity component system? So an entity actually, um, it's a group, uh, 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 actually it, 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 it basically, before I even say it's a group together, grouping together the components actually. So in traditional approach, we usually have a game object actually, we usually have a game object, but in this, um, um, in terms of data oriented approach, uh, or, or in terms of data oriented technology, uh, the game object we can convert it to as an entity. Then the component actually is the data that those game objects contain. But this game object now we don't call game object; it's an entity because you've already converted it. I'll show you the simple way so that you can understand from this uh, from, from the baseline. I've actually actually tried to ask many people what entities are. So you know, um, I, most of them yeah, yeah they can uh, write the code about the entity, but defining uh, from the baseline what entity is, a simple thing like that, you know, they might end up, they don't know actually uh, on what they're writing, but it's just an entity and that's it. So, and the system uh, is basically a behavior, you know, controlling the data that you have from the components, you know, introducing the behaviors on our game or in our application. So, in a um, in a traditional approach, a game object, for example, a player might have a renderer, physics, and the movement. Those are the components that are to this game object. But for the entity component system, um, um, uh, the player actually is referred to as an entity. So the renderer, physics, and the movements are the set of the component data. And um, uh, actually, a system actually is a separate uh, approach where it's going to uh, control actually or manipulate the data from the component data. Yes, okay. C-sharp job system. 
it's uh, one of the component of data-oriented technology. So this helps us actually to um, to utilize the power of multi-threaded core. You know, having more than one CPU. So these are the logical processes we usually have in our hardware. So this help us. You know, this helps in processing the problem actually. Um, simultaneously at the same time. So, for example, as you can see on the diagram here, a problem that is going to be uh, is actually is broken down into separate um, um, into separate instructions. Then all of them are uh, um, are allocated to every logical processor, and this logical processor they process those data uh, uh, at, at an equal number of uh, time. Actually, so this is what we call a parallel processing. So they, uh, a huge task is broken down into a chunk of tasks, and these tasks are allocated to the processor. Then this processor processes those tasks uh, at an equal amount of time. So this is quite different from the sequential computing. This is computing. For the sequential computing, one task is processed at a time. So if you have multiple tasks, then the CPU has to process one task. And once that task is finished, then the next one comes. So, uh, so on and so forth. That's how the sequential processing works. But for the parallel one, things here are different. Computing is even more, you know, it gives the, uh, you know, um, it adds something called the performance to, uh, to, uh, to application. So it's really a big, big deal actually introducing the parallel processing to our game application. And the BAST compiler is simply, uh, you know, helping, it, it, it's there actually to, op, uh, to improve the performance of our game actually. So, yeah, so, but for the BAST compiler, um, it's, uh, Unity has already taken care of that. So there's no much uh, you can do with this, but you just have to introduce this is a BAST compiler, then process this job, actually help to compile this job. So it's just like an attribute. There's not much you can just write about the compilers, BAST compiler, but uh, yeah. So, I think um, I, uh, this, this is today's session, so um, we need actually to go and test some scripts. But before that, this is what you're going to do today. Uh, you're going to test the ECS and the job system, compare the performance with the traditional approach, instantiation, instantiating the prefabs, um, testing dots in the physics and the events, I think we can do it today, but it all depends uh, because we don't have that time. The, our time is actually limited, but I'll show you uh, how the physics event and the event, uh, and the event actually the physics and the events of the dots work. But in case we have time, we'll do. and some testing demos I have, we can uh, uh, we'll play along with that, and uh, we'll inspect some code, try to understand what is in ES ECS the job system and the BAST compilers um, that are working together actually to deliver a high um, quality games that is actually more optimized. No, thank you. Now let's start and see some practical aspects of that, but uh, I'll just have to write some codes. Okay, let me just share the screen again. So this is my scene actually. I've prepared a sample of my scene here. It just puts um, minimize this one. Yeah. Minimize this one actually. So um, we'll start. Uh, I'll just have to do some intro with some basic concept of dots. This is just our scene actually. It doesn't have anything at all. So if you're a beginner, don't panic. We, there's no big deal here, so don't worry about this error. So yeah. So there are two. I'll have in, in this thing maybe I'll test on. Uh, I'll try to write some simple entity component system and uh, the job system, entity component system and the job system actually. So yeah. We will start with the, maybe I'll just disable this one. I don't want this one. So let me just start with the entity component system. Yeah, cool. Or I just, I can just disable this one. 
So this is testing for the entity component system. Now open it here. So I, let me introduce it. So this is what we are uh, calling the, the entity component system is comprised of the entities, the components, and the system itself. So this is what we call the component. The component basically, the function is to store the data. That's the only uh, the thing the component data is capable of doing. So its, it's main task is to store the data. And the good thing about it, you can just um, drag and drop these scripts to the your game object there on the hierarchy. So, so that you can be able to um, change your, uh, your, your, your data like this, for example, the levels. So this was called an ent uh, component data. We're inheriting this from the I component data interface. So all of this have used hey, the Isaac, following. Sorry to interrupt yes? you. Are you showing something on another screen? Okay, can, can you see my screen? We see Unity. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, sorry. I don't know. You, I mean, Visual Studio actually. So no, I think it's um, because you're sharing Unity and not the screen, the full screen. Okay, let me try again. Yeah, no worries. You probably need to unshare. Yeah. So okay, I'll share the screen. Oh, right. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Now we see Visual Studio. Perfect. Yeah. Cool. So. If yes, so this is what uh, this is what you call the component data actually. So the main function of this is to store the data. That's the, the basic thing actually. The entity itself, you, you can have a game object, you can convert the game object to an entity. And the system is a uh, different, uh, we, our system actually is a class, but uh, we can inherit it from the system itself or we can inherit it from job actually, the job system that can do that. So, but in this case, it all depends on, um, on your thinking capacity. But in this case, I've just decided to start with the ECS and this is the component system that I've done, uh, I've, um, I've guessed it here. So um, the main uh, concept behind this, I just want to, um, to have some uh, groups of birds or butterflies, I don't know, they can just fly within here on a space. So yeah, so let's just try to write some little bit of code. But I've already prepared some component data. It's, the, it's just a structure, it's not a class. But for the system, it's just a class. So this is the level up system. Uh, uh, and, and this is an on update method uh, that's, uh, that's actually overriding from this class of the component system. So there are a lot of things actually here you can override. A lot of uh, methods here you can override. So it all depends on what you actually want to do. Maybe on create or some stuff like that. Cool, so let me just try to increase the level of every entity that is on the level of components. So yeah, cool. Just try to share my screen here. Okay, cool, so the mover system. So let me create, actually, um, before, be, before this, let me just try to have um, this one working first of all, before this one for the mover system. This is the level up system and this is the mover system. So it can just have this one for the start. Um, entity manager. Entity manager, entity manager. Goes to world dot default game object. Okay, so, so I don't think if we have that much time we can write. So maybe I can just copy paste some code I do have here today for the um, for that part. So let's I can just copy these codes because there are a lot of things. But I'll just discuss and explain. Yeah, cool, that's pretty cool. So this is what actually I was supposed to write, but I don't have that time to write everything because you don't have that time to write. So 
I, uh, sorry actually if I'm protesting, but I'll try to explain each and every line. So this is basically to create an entity manager that will help us to create the archetype that you have discussed in the presentation, collection of the same entity component data. And these are the, um, uh, the uh, actually these are the collection of those um, entity data, the, the component data that I've discussed previously. So we have the level components that I've um, declared it right here. Um, we have the translation one that is coming actually from unity unity of transform. Um, the render mesh is actually coming from the unit itself. The render bounds and the mover speeds components that is just down here that will uh, just, uh, show us the actually you know basically the speed of the um, the any game or any agent or the entity that you want to have you know for the movement parts of it and. Add uh, local to world actually is basically from the um, unity itself. So yeah, I just have to discuss maybe do the commentation on local to world and all those stuff. So we are not going to use uh, the system that collections like this. We're not going to use the normal arrays, but instead we are using the native arrays. So this native arrays is coming. Um, actually, it's helping. So the this, this, this actually from the native containers. So there are a lot of uh, um, collections that's coming from the native containers, including, uh, you know, the, we have the native arrays, we have the native list. So there are quite a number, there are many actually, so showing the Unity documentation. I, I, bet, I, I guess you see it in the Unity documentation. So yeah, so this array of the entities that I want to create, I just want to have maybe 1,000 uh, ent uh, entities to create uh, 1,000 entities during the runtime actually. So um, then at the entity manager, we create it with the archetype and we pass the entity, the number of entities, and we allocate it as a temporary on our own memory. So create an archetype with the number of entities we want. So this is basically what it does. Then for each, so now we loop on these entities that you've created here, and uh, we create a single entity for, for every loop. And uh, for, for each of them, we set the component data. So you have the level component, the mover speed, and the translation one. So this actually is a property of this structure, it's the level component. We have the level here. I'll show you this one. So the same, same to the mover, mover speed and the translation one. For the translation, um, Actually, for the translation, it, uh, instead of using vector three, we're using float three. It's coming from unity.mathematics, and it accepts x and y, x, y, and z. So this just basically I've used from directly from unity e, random dot range, uh, so that I can um, instantiate where from within this range of, of x, y, and z. Actually, yeah, instantiating. So then we create a shared component of data for the mesh and material so that we can be able to view it on the unit editor once we run. And uh, don't, get, don't forget to dispose this entity once we use it. So these are a component data for the mover speed and for the level speed. This is the component system that is introducing the behaviors to our level components data. And we are setting the level component data with this. Our unity time, but the delta time was very bad. This is for the level up system. For the mover system, I prepared for that. I don't have time to write the code because it's already 8.41 East African time. I've already used 40 minutes. Yes, so this is an um, on updates, actually. I'm overriding a function inherited from this class. And uh, what basically this system does, uh, for each of the entities that we have, this is what we call the reference. So um, this basically means that we are reading and writing from the translation uh, component data. Actually, that's what actually we're doing. And for the mover speed components, we are reading and writing. But if you want to read actually, or, but not write, you can just type in in mover system. This means that you're only reading it. So you can see, introduce the errors because this one we uh, cannot assign to a member of variable because it is only it is a read only variable. So yeah, but if you want to write, you just have need to reference it. That's it. 
So yeah, so this is basically the common logic when uh, our, our, our entities goes beyond the 50, um, be, beyond these points, then we, um, we return it back. Same wise with this one. So it's just, yeah, we need to control the movement of those entities. That's it from this side. Um, I'll just have to save it and test it on the editor. But before that, I just want to tell, uh, to show you that we this um, this is what you call the ECS actually the, a simple ECS from the from the uh, from the beginners approach. So this is the component data. This the, the, the entities it's here, are actually here. So sorry, this is a serialized field. So there's something actually you need to. Um, notice here, we have a mono behavior actually, a mono, a mono behavior class. So, and we have um, the same kind of the uh, normal way that we usually uh, write a serialized field for the mesh and material so that we can access it in Unity Editor and just drag and drop our mesh and materials here so that we can access it. Yeah, so maybe I can just save this one. Um, Yes, so it's already compiled everything. And this is the ECS A testing. So uh, this is the mesh. Uh, in this case, I have used butterfly. There are a lot of things, there are a lot of meshes that I have it here, but for the visual purpose, I've just used butterfly. And for the material, I've just used the butterfly material. So this uh, upon you, it depends on your size. So yeah, so let me just hit play. Okay, so this, let me maximize this one. So you can see these are thousands of butterflies here. So let me test the, um, the game. So this is the stats, my, graph is, my, my graphics is running at 200, relatively 260 frames per second. And the CPU time is uh, four to five, you know, milliseconds. So I've just used the ECS approach, actually. So yeah, and I'll try to show you um, if we're not going to use the ECS, what will happen? But in that case, yeah, I'll just try to show you on that on how it happens. So the thing here, maybe we can just inspect on the uh, just to go on the analysis um, entity debugger. So yeah, so these are set of the number of the entities that you introduced. These are the 1,000 1, entities and every entity you can inspect here on the inspector. These are the, these are the levels and the translation value of the Z component that I changed somewhere here. Somewhere here, so this is where I'm actually uh, updating things. So it's, Changing, um, yeah, 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 changing in real time. So these are all entities. Another thing that I want you to understand: we don't have these butterflies here on our hierarchy because all of them are entities. So they are not game objects; they are entities. So it gives us a smooth time of running on our CPU. So yeah, cool. I'll share it with you guys so you can explore more and more about it. Okay, cool. So I just want to, maybe I'll disable this one. I just want to go through the job, actually the job system, testing on jobs. Um, the same, um, let me open it. So it's just the same. Okay, I'll close this, I'll, let me just, okay, cool. So let me just go through this code I prepared for you guys. Um, I'll start from here. So this is the normal um, serialized field for us to access it from a, uh, from a hierarchy panel. So on bool, use job or not use job. And this is actually my object that I drag and drop actually from my prefabs. And this is the list of the agents that you want. For example, birds, butterfly, or any kind of, it's, yeah, it's just a property of this one. So, we just have to transform 
and the plot of the movement actually. So it's just a class, property of this class. I'll show you where I would use, uh, I'll use this one. So I've just created the list of this class. And on the start, this is the agent list. And I've insta I created the inst instance of the agent list. And, uh, and this is the follow actually. And I'm looking around uh, 1,000. And so actually went for example, 1,000, but we'll test it within, with other number actually. 10,000, 50,000 can see uh, what's happening on my CPU. So this is the agent that I'm instantiating with my game objects here. And um, with the new, uh, and actually once you instantiate, we pass the location that you want to instantiate through the vector three, because um, um, we're not actually using any entities because uh, this is just the normal way. And, and yeah, that's basically it. And the rotation actually for the container.identity. Then we add it, uh, this agent list, we add all these agent properties that we have it here as an agent that's transform and the movement while just, this is the speed actually, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll create a random between one and two float or something like that. One to two float, sorry, rotation value for that one. In updates, this is where I'll process the job. I'll paste the code here on how we can process a job, but if we don't process a job, we we'll look, on every agent that we have. And uh, this is what actually it will do, basically. Um, this is the agent, so we are setting the position of this agent. If it go beyond this one, we set it to this one. If it goes beyond this one, we resort it with, uh, with this one. So if it goes beyond this value of 50 on the Z position, we set it with, the, uh, with this function, math.abs. And if it goes beyond the Z, the Z value, negative 50, then we set it back to this one so that we can have it contained in a particular position because it's moving actually. So this is the float value here and um, we loop around it because the number of that one, we're setting it with this one. So just, it, it, it's kind of a task. So this is where we have a task. So because this is a job system, we just want to test it a task. So this is really, really huge. I'm giving my compiler a lot of time to do this actually. Yeah, it's just a simple demo. And uh, before that, I have something I've introduced it here. This is start time. We can uh, measure our start time uh, and the end time actually. So, and, and we print it right here to, to, to uh, compare our start time and our end time. So that's it from this section. Um, maybe I'll write simple code on the, uh, to execute the jobs that I've created down here. So there are three kind of jobs that I have it here and every job, it has a bust compile. So I have added an attribute of bust compile on every job and this job, you can, know, you can notice that uh, we have, you are using structs instead of classes. So these are structures instead of classes. They, they all you that we have been using C, same kind of C attribute. So this is really a tough job. So I've tried to use the iJob uh, interface. There are a couple number of interfaces, but do remember that I have already imported this one using unity.jobs. These are the uh, most common use. So something like using system.collections is not used. So using unity.jobs, using unity engine.jobs. So it's just the normal one and this one is directly from the uh, entity components uh, from, the, from the hybrid renderer. But uh, yeah, cool. So, but I'll try to show you, this is just an overview try to show you on how we can just get started, but uh, yeah. So this is the first interface that I tried to use and tested it. And then I read the documentation and I, and I saw that there's another kind of interface called iJob Parallel 4. So this one is used for the parallel processing. It's just basically the same as this one, but this one is more uh, focused on this Parallel 4. So I've created a couple of uh, container, native containers here, like native arrays of different float three, like this is the vector three actually, and it's how to execute this task. Actually, basically it, uh, can, it has to create um, those uh, um, uh, agents that I want to display on my editor. And this is actually a kind of job. So this is a job actually, it's a, a, a kind of task of job that I want to execute. And this is the last one job here, but don't, don't mind. All of these are not necessary. All of these are not necessary. I've just created 
three, this, this actually uh, three jobs here. So it doesn't mean that you have to create all of these jobs. So, you know, this is just a testing purpose. Uh, uh, I created three jobs because I used different um, um, interfaces here to test on how it's working. So uh, at the first, I used iJob. Then the second one, I tried to use iJob Parallel 4. And the third one, I used iJob Parallel for Transform, but I found that this one is they're basically working the same, but I ended up using this one. But also this one basically working, yeah, it's not that. But I'll show you on how you can schedule this job. So I just forget about this one and let's focus on this one. So this actually what it does is just the same task, it's just the same job, um, but this is what um, uh, I, I actually focusing on. So they're introducing an index here because you want to have you know, um, those uh, entities that we are using. Now it loops ar around the entity, every entities that we have to set all of its component data right here. It's just basically the same and actually Loop and giving a simple uh, a simple task here, yeah, a simple task here. So it's basically just the same like um, this one when you are not using jobs. This one, this else block. Cool. So that's it. So for the jobs one, this is one I prepared for you guys. So I just I can just sorry, I can just copy. Have I lost connection? Oh. Uh, no, I can't hear uh, Isaac either. So I've used to Trinity jobs. Um, transform access array, sorry if you can hear me clearly. Sorry about that. You, you just came back. Am I audible? Okay, sorry, sorry about that. Yeah. So this basically, if you use jobs, this now it has to process my jobs here. So this is what. I ended up using, so I've shown you this one. This is the job that I created here. And I want actually to execute, uh, uh, to, to schedule this job. So this is the function of executing. Now I want to schedule this job so that we can use it. Before that, I, cre I created a transform access array that can store my, um, basically the agents, that's the, the entities, the, the, the number of entities that they, that they have. And this is the native array that is storing my Z position because the Z position is moving. So we can just have a normal list uh, array, but because uh, this, uh, the transform access array and the native array basically, you know, is, um, is, is a dot supported, it, it, it's, it's a native container, it's a part of dots technology. So we can just use the normal list. And then I iterated it with this one and every uh, entity. So I just written agent list is basically an entity count. And as for every uh, Z position, I set it to, uh, to, to this one actually. So sorry, this is basically what Z. So just a naming position. Then after that, this is the task actually that I want to show you. This is the structure that I created initially. And this is the instance I have. This is the instance. I'm creating an instance of that job. And I'm passing all this data because if you're working delta time and the move array, like this one. Um, so we have move array and the delta times, basically the properties of this um, uh, job that we, we have here. So basically passing it right there. Then we create a handle for this job to schedule our job. So we are passing, so this is the uh, instance of this job. And this is the method coming from this one. And uh, we are actually executing our job. And we also need to complete our job. Once, once we complete our job, um, we we'll basically uh, iterate around so that we can reset the position of every entities that we have. Yeah, and once you, we complete our job, then the system needs to dispose the transform access array because uh, once uh, it is used, then we need to dispose from the memory so that we can give memory the space for the other task to be processed. So that's it. That's it. 
I am I can go to dots. It's actually processing, so it's compiling, no compilation errors. So you can just save. This is testing job. So now I don't I don't use jobs. So let me press play and see what will happen. Okay, these are my bars. <laughs> So as you can see, the graphics is at 5.7, roughly 5 point something, 5.5 frames per second. And my CPU time is using 170, 100 something, 170 basically, an average of 170 milliseconds. And this actually the bad log, but this one I know sometimes it can cause it to drain your performance, but I'll just disable it in a while. So it's not using a job. We use this one so that you can see it clearly. So what if we use jobs? Wow, as you can see, now um, if you go to our stats, our, graph, uh, our frame rate has uh, uh, is now at 270 frames per second. Yeah, that's really big deal. So, and our CPU time is at three uh, milliseconds from around uh, maybe show you 170 milliseconds sorry about that yeah so this is actually a huge improvement you can see uh this are flying smoothly with a great performance yeah so let me inspect now at our memory and what is happening so uh i don't, I don't yeah i have a Profiler here actually, so let me maximize it and what's happening. So currently you're using jobs, and this is what is happening. So I can just pause it and go to a profile so that we can inspect on what's happening here. So this is our job allocated to our memory to our memory. So as you can see, we have I have so it depends on your machine. So mine has you know, six workers, jo job workers, six job workers. So this is how basically uh, it processed my task. So um, um, so it's basically giving me a, a, an update of uh, 1.83 milliseconds. That's the CPU response time, basically, when I'm using the jobs. And to see how our jobs was, uh, um, was um, processed by a different cause, um, at least you can see um, this is zero point story you can see i can maybe um yeah that can see it clearly yes okay um this is some of the idle time it's giving us so it just wants to go up so we can see how our task was divided to different job workers so this is it okay, this is it so if you go near it, we can see that um, we have at, uh, 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 you know, um, it's giving us at around uh, 0 0.55 um, millisecond and um, idle time is around 0 0.31. And as you can see, it's almost giving us an equal amount of millisecond from the, uh, from, from, from the task that's. So this every frame rate we can just review on every frame so what has just happened. So if you want, you can see this one is quite using quite number of memory. So you can just inspect it here. So you can see how cool um, uh, our job has been uh, uh, divided so that our, so that our processor every every call uh, is uh, processing the task uh, with almost at least at least equal number of time. Yeah, so if I press um, that one, you can see it's running. So basically that's how. So if it, let's see, let's you use this one. If you don't use jobs, um, this is what actually happens. You can see um, the task is quite huge because you're not using jobs. So this is basically what happens. Um, it gives us, um, at around uh, this actually what happens you know so the response time of the cpu is quite bigger compared to uh when you're using jobs so this is the update function 
giving us that total time for this uh, for the invoke one this for the system group so we can just move around here and can see what has really happened to our job that's been allocated on our CPU. So it's just like that on our job. So we have just co compared our, our performance. And uh, yeah, that's it from the job system. So maybe it can just continue to play. And if we use jobs, yeah, we have boost our frames frame rate actually. So that's basically on how um, we have actually distinguished between um, um, the traditional approach and, um, uh, and the DOT approach. So you've seen there's a great significant, great performance when you're using DOTs, especially when you want to have, you know, the, the deal is um, you, you, when we want to apply it to your real, uh, you, maybe to your project, um, it doesn't mean that, you know, you can apply it to any part of it because um, the, the principles remain the same on how um, data is allocated to, to your memory, if it's scattered or if it's arranged. So somebody just asked me that uh, in case I have so many uh, game objects that I want to have on my scene like this one, I just, I can just use jobs. Yeah, that's okay. That's definitely you can use it, but there are a lot of areas where you can apply jobs, maybe uh, like the, um, the events, the physics system, and so other uh, interesting features. Yeah, so that's it from jobs. I've shown you a couple of entities. I'll share it with you at the GitHub so that you can download and test this project. Now for the past compilers, um, basically when I run actually, so I said previously that the you know, best compiler is actually coming with all of this, with the dots. So um, this is my best compiler that has been that has been you know enabled by default actually. So it's coming by default, so you don't need to worry about the best compiler. But if you want to disable it, then uh, you need to use the best compiler. Sorry, actually, um, for those who want to get started on how you can just, you know, get started with the dots, we just came to the package manager here and uh, you search for the um, a hybrid renderer. So mine, I just installed the hybrid renderer. Uh, so there are a lot of, a uh, couple number of, you know, uh, the preview version. So currently you don't have this stable version of hybrid renderer. So that's it. I just installed it and it will come with other, components including um, uh, the entities and the past and the, yeah, so yeah, the packages that is uh, required with this one. So basically, instead of uh, installing entities, instead of jobs, uh, you know, you can just install all of them by uh, installing the hybrid renderer. So yeah, from that point, uh, you'll see these menus, dots, jobs, um, the components of them. Uh, sorry, the, the dots and the jobs. And from that point, you can start writing your own entity component system. Yeah, so I don't think um, maybe if I have more time to explain on uh, how maybe we can have a simple scenario where you can um, instantiate your prefabs, you know, some kind of, you know, instantiating your prefabs. I prepared a simple project here for you, you know, share it with you. Yep. So this is just a prefab test on how we can maybe instantiate the prefabs, uh, maybe of the parts prefabs or some stuff like that. So it's pretty, pretty um, uh, uh, easier actually. So before that, I just want to tell you something. If I want to create maybe a game object like this, you know, you can, instead of writing codes on how you can convert your game object, um, you can just drop here, convert to entity, and that's it. So this game object will be converted as an entity. So I'll just show you on how that one works. It's simple, it's a, just a simple like that. So I've already converted my game object, or if I have, let's say, a butterfly like this one. This may be my model. Um, I don't know where it is. Yeah, this one. So if I just want to convert this one into an entity, 
I can just click on convert to an entity. Let me just disable this one. Um, let me just remove this one so that you can have that one. If I, um, sorry, I just want to um, click on play. So, yeah. So definitely I'm expecting that that butterfly is not here. This is my butterfly, you can see here. So the butterfly is not on my hierarchy panel. So if I go to um, window um, analysis with my analysis, okay, I don't think, oh my, sometimes I feel like entity debugger, yes, this is my butterfly, it has been converted as an entity, as simple as that. Instead of writing uh, uh, codes on how you can convert your get object as an entity, you just have to drop this uh, script here, convert to entity, and that's it. Actually, sorry, uh, it's not here actually, so it's there. So, and that's it. And this is my butterfly. So on right time, it will automatically be converted as an entity. As simple as that. We will now see on how we can maybe instantiate prefabs. Um, let's say we have tests. Maybe I can open my script. They have already converted to an, to an entity, this game object, and this is the prefabs entity. So there are different ways you can instantiate your prefabs. So I can just quickly go through these four classes, these four uh, script that I've created here. The reason as to why I have this one, this is the prefab entities, another prefab entities. Uh, this is the spawner actually that can you know, help me to spawn the, uh, the, uh, the entities. And this one is another. So the, these three scripts here, they are basically uh, the methods you can use to uh, instantiate your prefabs. So I don't know which one is better than which one because Currently, dot is still in preview stage. So let me just start with the entities component system on how you can pre um, um, instantiate your prefabs using an entity component system. So this is a prefab uh, entity component. So just basically create a struct like this. I've created mine like this is the prefab entity component. And then you just basically um, inherit this one from this one using unity.entities. As simple as that, then you create your entity. This is my entity here. Simple as that. So now this is basically my entity uh, data. I can use it here on my Unity editor to drag and drop it here. So you can see I have drag and drop that script it here. It's pref uh, prefab entities. So you can just uh, uh, um, uh, you can just alter the data here. You can just change your data if you want, or even your prefabs. And the good thing, this prefab will be uh, changed into an entity. I'll show you. So yeah, let me just go step by step instead of jumping. So the next thing is the system. So this is the spawner system. Um, this is a class of the spawner system that's coming from the component system. I have it here. And this is the float, you know, uh, these are the data that I want, maybe the spawner time, and the randomness of those, uh, uh, the, the location that I want to instantiate those prefabs. And this is my own updates. This one my creates on my updates. It's basically a method that is being, I'm overriding from this class component system. On create, I'm setting this random to be at 60. And on updates, I set my spawner time uh, to this one actually, random unity time with delta time, so it's basically. Uh, the traditional one that you've been using. And this is actually the spawner's time. So this is, a, this is a place of spawning it. I'll paste the code it here. And uh, this is the mover speed component, actually. It's only hold the data, but no behavior. I think I have that one. I prepared that one. This is the spawning part of that. Um, this is the spawning part. So I just want maybe to uh, spawn it here. Um, let's get it out. Yeah. So, yeah. So, this is the spawned entity. Um, actually, these are the. I'll, I, I can just. 
um, gray this one out. I can just uh, and I highlight this one out. Uh, you know, uh, I just want to show you a simple approach. So let me start with this one. This is my entity, and then I create from the entity manager. It's coming from the unity.entities, and then access this method instantiate. Then I, I pass my prefabs.entities. If I go to this class, prefabs.entities, it's this one. I can just go to definition. This is the prefab entities, and this is just a mode behavior. And then I use this one, I convert the game object to entity, and it's basically coming from the unity of the entities class. And this is my game object. This is just my empty, my empty you know, uh, entity. I made it static so that I can access it from the other classes. And this is the, basically my convert, um, my convert method, you know, uh, coming from this, uh, implemented actually from this I convert the game object to entity. And this is a set of the, uh, the parameters here that is really useful. So in this case, don't worry about this. Uh, what's blob asset store? Um, the, I'm not going to cover it for today, but it's basically a um, um, better way of storing your um, your entity on it. You know, storing storage of the entities on this blob asset store because it's disposable. Uh, I'm using using the basically disposable. I've just created my entity here and game object conversion utility, then I'm converting my game from the object hierarchy. So this is the convert game object hierarchy. Then I'm, I'm passing my prefabs and different after passing the prefabs, this is my settings actually. This is my settings actually, this is what uh, my settings is. So game object conversion settings, but from wall because I'm converting it from wall, then I pass this one and the blob assets to this one actually that's going to be disposed when this one is executed and this instantiated prefabs um, actually assigning this uh, public static entity entity, entity free, prefabs. I'm assigning it with this one so that I can access it on my uh, entity, uh, on my system, and it is this one. And from that, I'm adding the set of component data to my entity manager, and this is my translation. Actually, it's basically from the uh, Unity transforms and to, uh, and I'm passing the value so you can, you can just inspect to go to the definition. This is the plot value. So actually it's basically, um, if I go deep again, go to definition, it's just, you know, accepting uh, three, um, three float X, Y, and Z. It's basically like a vector three, but this one is coming from unity, the mathematics that's here. And uh, passing it's, uh, my data here, so an X, this is just my random x and my y is basically zero because I don't want it to go up and down, just basically in between the x and z. And this is my z uh, data there. And that's it. I just, um, um, I don't want to use this one for now. I'll show you why. I just want to use this simple one that is coming from my mono behavior class. Let me just try to save and see what will happen. Uh, okay. Let it compile. I guess it's compiling. Okay. I'll click play. So, um, you can see where are those. Oh no, where am I? <laughs> Yeah, this, these are my um, butterflies actually. So I just want to go up. So I've just used um, a, 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 set, a set of time, you know, a time difference between one to F. This is where I actually declared it right on um, um, system uh, spawner time so that it's spawning our prefabs at that particular amount of time between a uh, range of time that used it there. So you can see it's just increasing. So if I go to my Windows um, maybe, uh, analysis and maybe entity debugger, you can see these are my entities here. All my butterflies are now entities. You remember those butterflies? They were just basically a game object and I've just converted it into an entity. Yeah, as simple as that. So you can just maybe introduce your input system. 
maybe if you want to enter uh, with the spacebar or press anything, then it will just instantiate. But I've just basically used time to instantiate my butterflies, and they're just basically uh, spawned at a particular uh, random point between uh, you know uh, the specified range that I've just uh, you know, added to my, on my code, I've just had coded to my code. So this is basically on how you can instantiate your prefab. So it's pretty confusing, actually, I can just say it's pretty, everything is pretty confusing, but the more you do, um, you know, the, the, the more you do the practices, then the more you, you get to understand it better. For the first time, it seems quite challenging and confusing, but, you know, practice keeps on, you know, you can perfect on how you can do all this, but you'll find it quite, simple if you start using dots you know simple project building a simple project on dots but though unity have said that you know um you can't just use you know dots on your uh production uh games because it's currently still in, on preview because things can keep on changing like the apis but uh i recommend you can just um, start creating your own simple uh, games, simple games, maybe not for production, just for testing purposes so that you can keep yourself on the, on, um, uh, on a, actually can keep yourself ahead of others because yeah, this is the next actually technology that um, is coming. So I think um, my session is over because this is just an overview. But before that, I'll close this session with a demo game here, a complete demo game here. I just want to show you. Okay, cool. So this is basically, we can just play this game. It's basically, okay, it was just introduced during, like, I think, I guess, Unite, Unite event, as part of the, um, um, show the, the possibility on how you can build a game based on the DOTS technology. Uh, I don't think, let me just maximize, I think my, my machine, yeah, cool. So you can just use W. So you can see there is a sound system implemented there. That's it. So basically I'm using, uh, okay, basically this code shows you how we can use um, you know, entity component system, how we can just, you know, uh, spawn the bullets, uh, you know, the, and the event actually, for example, if uh, this enemy wants to attack me, I can just die or something like that. So basically what this project shows, or it, there's a possibility on how you can integrate your dots with the, um, um, you know, traditional mono behavior uh, paradigm. So there's a possibility on how you can, you know, integrate your systems with the normal mono behavior system. Maybe I, I, I can just go through quickly here on what's happening, because um, before that, these are this our player, so as a rigid body, uh, everything that's just normal the way we've been using it. And the deal here, first we're converting this player as an entity, and then there's a player to entity conversion script, is basically a component data, we are passing it the, uh, our held value. So once your enemy attacked you, attacks you, then that's, you have only one life uh, lifespan. So yeah. So once it attacks you, then you die or something like that. So this is basically directly coming from the entity data. This is the player shooting script. Um, and actually this is the movement, player movement on which, you know, on your, yeah, basically. So this is just a hybrid one. And uh, if I can go further on our GAN, um, this is the audio, just normal way on how we can spawn, uh, uh, spawn things. And this is just our camera actually, um, just a normal one, a post-processing effect. Um, just, um, you know, yeah. So it's just a normal way, there's no any kind of dots related stuff here, still to the ground not converted into dots. This is a hybrid project. It's not purely based on the entity component system. Um, it's the game settings, just like a, a game manager, the enemy spawner scripts. This is now um, the entity component data. 
you know, probably use ECS or it can't use, you, can, you, can, you may miss to use the ECS. Maybe I can just disable that one. I can also come to the player and um, uh, disable this one use ECS. And you can just test our performance to see on what will happen here. So definitely, I'm just going to co compare my, my stats. Um, my stats is at around two, or oh, no, you can see there is a bad, bad, bad performance. Literally bad performance and they are, have died because um, there are num lots of uh, game objects instantiated when I pressed um, uh, shoots. So those are game objects, so they are, maybe literally thousands of game objects. So it greatly reduced my, uh, my performance. So if I used uh, maybe um, the ECS, then things will be easier actually to use and the enemy spawner, maybe you can just use the ECS. Um, you can just compare the easiness on how the performance can increase, you know. So you can see, these are thousands of the uh, bullets that I'm spawning from my from my gun. This is actually a great, great, great deal. So it does not limit us with the number of the um, entities that we want to instantiate. But there's one major thing that I would like to discuss. Um, it also depends on the machine. Definitely, that's a definite uh, discussion, you know, a definite uh, concern. Because if you have a low performance machine and you maybe we try to instantiate these entities, maybe for around 100,000 entities or 100,000, you know, entities or uh, 500,000 entities, that's a huge entity and it can definitely decrease the performance. So, you know, the more the number of entities, or the more the number of entities that you wish to instantiate, then the less the frame rate, you know, the, the less the frame rate drops. So that's definitely, that's um, a basic law that's actually um, what happens. So yeah, I think that's it. So these are the scripts. Uh, this is the entity component scripts. Maybe you can just go through the entity component script. The, the rest are just basically uh, the same way that we've been using, right? Our own games, the mono behaviors, the mono behavior, player shootings, projectile behaviors, and your settings. All of these are using just a mono behavior classes. A little big deal here. So this is the ECS part, this is the conversion, this is the data, and the system. So I can just start with the data. What are our data? So we have the enemy tag components. Can just see it here. This is the tag for the our enemy. Our health, maybe when this is where you store our value. And the great thing about this, we can reuse it to every uh, maybe to every tag that we want to use, maybe for the player and for the enemy also. So the good thing about this I component data, we can reuse it to um, to uh, to any tag. So to any tags, whether it's a player, whether it's an enemy, or whether it's a I don't know anything that you want to use it in your game. So it's reusable, that's a great deal about that. Um, move forward components is actually a tag for the, for the, uh, for the um, move forward. So it's introducing your serialized where you can just drag and drop to your game objects there. And this basically data for the speed of the, you know, this is a movement speed and this and basically a data for your player tag. And this one is basically time of life, you know, time of life. So basically, pass it your uh, your value here. It's a type of plot. So this is basically data. And um, this is the conversion. Before we go to the system, this is just basically a conversion on how we are converting our game object into an entity. So um, I just want I don't want to open the Visual Studio because this just gives us a brief highlight. Um, as you can see, we are using Unity Engine and the, uh, Unity Entities. Sorry. <laughs> so um, basically, this is a mono behavior class, but uh, this gives us a great advantage on how we can use this I convert game objects to entity. Um, let me just open it so that you can see it clearly. 
but as it's opening, we have I convert game objects to entity, then we implement this, yeah, oh, I think this one is better. Converts, you know, we, this, this is basically an implementation from this interface. And uh, you just add here to convert your, you know, basically your game, the, the game objects actually, and add the component set of components. So this, basically this is just a component to convert your game objects into a component. Last but not least, these are the systems that add the behaviors to our uh, to our game. For this case, for example, this one is a collision. They're using jobs. Uh, I can just open it here. So this is a job system. Um, this is number of uh, a set of the um, um, what do you call it uh, the the implementation that you come uh, that you're implementing it from this uh, class of job component system. And uh, we are using a vast compile and using a job chunk. So they're pretty cool things here on how we can use uh, this great advantage on you know job systems or the, or the ECS system to you know um, actually increase the performance of your game. Generally, that's a general um, conclusion. So you can just go ahead. As, I, I think it's on GitHub. You can just take a look if you haven't. I will share, it, I share the, uh, the entire project with you guys. So these are just set of systems that are um, uh, adding the behaviors to our component data. So you can, at your free time, you can just go take a look into this. And from that, maybe you can just continue learning. You, know, you can just use, depending on your uh, learning uh, speed, if you're using baby face, when you're using small, I don't know, it's all depends on you. But um, for the first time, actually, it's a little bit, okay, not a little bit, actually, it's pretty confusing for the first time. But if you try to have as many projects as possible, then I think it will become maybe your friend, you know, your best paradigm friend, you now your data, uh, data uh, oriented guy, you know, you're using a project based on data oriented. So, okay. Yes, now I think that's it from me, for, from us for today. I don't know if you have any questions. Kevin, anyone, yeah. Yeah, th thanks for that, Isaac. Um, I'm curious kind of what, what you think a good beginner project would be then. Um, is it something that you showed off today, like the different butterflies and, and birds? Sorry? It would, is something like what you showed off today a good, a good beginner project for dots? What would you suggest? Yeah, actually for what I've shown you today, I've just highlighted the overview of dots system. The jobs, the entity component system, and the bust, bust compiler system. But I ended up showing you the entire thing that is that look quite complex on you. But uh, for the beginner side, maybe you can just start on looking at the entity component system before coming to job. You know, these are three separate things. So when you want to have a beginner project, you can just start with the ECS. Then after that, you can move ahead to use jobs. Then basically, that's what I I can recommend. But these are two separate things, the ECS and the job system, two separate things. So if you want to start, just start with the ECS first because it's not that really hard. You just create your component data and the system behavior, then from that point, you can start from that. Then from that, you can advance to job systems where you will take advantage of using the parallel computing, uh, treating a job, scheduling them, you know, and executing them actually, executing and scheduling them, yeah. That's what I can recommend for the beginners. And I, I, I can say I'm not, not that perfect on dots. I'm not that, that perfect on dots. I'm also learning dots because we're all learning dots. So I've just used this opportunity to share what I'm currently doing about dots. Yeah. Cool. Do you it's, a long, uh, it's a long learning process. Um, uh, yeah, definitely. I think time. I think it's also good if you um, if you learn a little bit and then you let some time pass in between mm. and you come back to it after a while and then you know you might end up um, following maybe another tutorial like a very beginner one but then the second time things make much more sense. 
So yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it takes some time. How long, how long did it take you to learn object-oriented programming? You know. <laughs> um, that takes a while as well, right? Tech, uh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Everything takes time. Yeah. Because this is a complete new paradigm, so expect maybe. Exactly. That's, I think that's how you need to see it, and that's how people need to see it. It's not just a language, a programming language. Because at the end of the day, programming languages that we know, you know, like uh, C Sharp or... JavaScript, they all do the same thing, right? They all do object oriented in just different syntax. But yeah, this one is doing yeah. exactly something different. So it's like you need to rethink many, many things. Yeah, but you can say the language, programming language is the same C sharp, but paradigm is completely different with the object oriented stuff. Yeah, yeah exactly. Have you learned uh, different languages? Yeah, like JavaScript, yeah. Like my second language is actually JavaScript. Mm -hmm. I can use JavaScript for other projects. Yeah, so C Sharp, JavaScript, and C++. So C++, I usually use it during you know, research tests, researching tests on graphics. Yeah, and maybe a little bit of Python, but I'm not that fan of Python stuff. But yeah. But they, they, they're generally easy to jump from one another, right? It's generally that's, that's easy to jump from one another. Once you have the same concept, you know, the concept mm -hmm. just remains the same. The object-oriented concept remains the same. Yeah, just the syntax. Mm. Interesting. Is there, is there a, um, so you've got your sample project. Um, are there any other, thing, other things you'd recommend I, I look at? What was most helpful for you? Um, the things I can recommend, like, like the project or, or the area stuff, or you can look at, take a look. What, what do you mean specifically? So I was reading the message in the chat, but Billy is here. <laughs> um, sorry, could you, what, what was that? Sorry, okay, let me take a look at the chat. I don't know if I... Billy, do so, you have any questions that you'd like to ask? I have none.